This video is brought to you by Battleaxe. Hey, it's Jake, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use a rigging technique for characters in After Effects that you might not have even known existed, and I'm gonna give away a project file so that you can follow along with me. Rubber Hose is one of my favorite tools for rigging up characters in After Effects, and it has a fantastic system for making shape layered based limbs and even torsos or lots of other things. Anything that you want an IK system with and some pretty great advanced controls, the Rubber Hose system can get the job done. But did you know that there are two other character rigging tools inside of Rubber Hose other than just the regular shape layer hoses? Rubber Rig and Rubber Pin take the styling of the Rubber Hose character rigging system, but apply them to things that you can't do with just shape layers. So if you have character artwork that you need to rig up that isn't going to fit within the constraints of shape layers, Rubber Rig and Rubber Pin are here to pick up the slack. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to use the Rubber Rig system, which allows you to make an IK relationship between any two layers using controls that are very familiar and based on the existing Rubber Hose controls. Let's take a look at some examples. Here in Illustrator, I have this illustration of a girl in four different poses and some different outfits. And none of these limbs are really created in a way that we could easily recreate them using shape layers and the standard hose system in rubber hose. You see how the calf and the thigh have different shapes and they're weighted differently depending on what size of the center of the limb they're on. It's a very stylized character art look and I just wouldn't be able to pull this off with the base rubber hose styling but that doesn't mean that I need to jump to a different rigging tool because Rubber Rig can handle this kind of art perfectly. So I went ahead and prepared this pose in a way that was set up easily for rigging. The limbs are nice and straight. I used guides to make sure that everything was perfectly vertical or horizontal would work as well. And then I split up all the individual layers that I needed to be able to animate into their own layers in this Illustrator document. So let's take this into After Effects and see how to use the Rubber Rig system. So I'll jump over to After Effects. I've already imported the artwork. It's all set up here. No need to convert it to shape layers. The Illustrator artwork will do just fine. And I have Rubber Hose opened up here and docked in my workspace. Now the Rubber Rig system is going to require us to move the layers around before we set up the IK. So what I like to do is first create a backup of the artwork. So I'm going to duplicate this rig. I'm just gonna call it Girl Rig Reference and then drag that to the bottom of my comp. Just above the background layer. So now I can always see the unaltered version of this artwork. I'll just shut it off for now. And if you'd like to follow along with me, I'm gonna provide an Illustrator file with an After Effects project all set up just like this, so you can follow along as well. This character illustration I got off of Envato Elements, so I can't share that with you, but I have created my own illustration. It looks like this, and you can download and use that yourself. All right, so the first step of this process, let's just pick one of the limbs. Let's take the front arm here. This is the right arm. I'm gonna select the upper arm and the forearm, and I just wanna solo them. So I'm gonna not be distracted by all the other artwork, and let's turn our transparency grid off so we can see it nice and clearly. The first thing I need to do is center this joint, the elbow, in the comp center. So to find the comp center, it's really easy. Just come down to this menu right here and turn on your title or action safe. The keyboard shortcut for that is the apostrophe key, just turning it on and off, and right there is the crosshair for the comp center. So I'm gonna click and drag right where that joint is and move it to the center of my layer, and then I'm gonna select the top part of the limb first and then the lower part of the limb. So in an arm, that would be upper arm, forearm. In the leg, it would be the thigh, and then the calf. Once you have those two layers selected in that order, I'm gonna come over to Rubber Hose 2 and I'm gonna give it a name by typing in this field. I'll call this R arm and we want it to be labeled with shoulder and wrist for the start and end of the limb. And then all I have to do is click the new rubber rig button. The script runs and we've got two controllers and I can immediately click and drag and I have an IK relationship between these two controllers. Now the arm is bending in the wrong direction so I'm gonna select the wrist controller, change the bend direction to negative 100. Now it's gonna bend in this direction. The other thing that's a little weird is that the joints at the shoulder and the wrist aren't lining up with the controllers. So rubber hose can only do so much in terms of predicting where these controllers should go, but we can modify it very easily. All this rigging is done with rotation and scale and position. So I can just click on that part of the limb and then go to the segment length control that rubber hose added. This will allow me to shrink it down or scale it up until it fits that controller. This is essentially just scaling the layer. And really I can adjust any of these properties. I could 
rotate it if it wasn't aligned that way. I could go to the anchor point and adjust that if I want the joint to be slightly different because the anchor points are now at the comp center where we align the joints. But I can be very precise with getting this back to the way that it should be. And then we'll worry about the actual length of the limb later when we go to realign it to the actual artwork. So I'm just gonna change the length of this segment as well and maybe adjust the anchor point so that it aligns with that controller. Now the wrist controller is right there where it should be and the shoulder as well. What I wanna do now is unsolo all of those layers and then grab the two controllers. These are now what are driving the entire arm's artwork and I can move it back up. So the way that I'm gonna get this position precisely is by going into my reference comp. So I'm gonna double click on that and solo the right forearm and the right arm and then go back to this comp Make sure that's enabled and I'll drag that just below the arm and the forearm that I'm trying to place and then solo those layers as well as the controllers one more time. So now I can use the wrist and the shoulder controllers to place this over top of what was already there. I'm gonna zoom in nice and close so I can do this a little more precisely. And just to make sure I don't move it, I'm gonna lock that reference as well. So let's grab that shoulder controller and just place this roughly where it needs to be, then pan down to the base click and drag this controller to get the tip of the wrist to line up where it should. Now this rig is making the hose longer than it should be, but all I need to do is come into the hose length and drop that down until I basically hit that stretched out mark. And now I can know that this is going to be straight where it should be, and I can now click and drag this around and have a working IK system. So let's turn off our reference layer, let's unsolo everything else, and the process for rigging all of these other layers is identical. So why don't I move on to the leg, and I'll show you that one, and then we'll time lapse through the rest. So I'll solo those two layers, the right thigh, the right calf, click and drag the joint right at the knee, which this might be a little hard to see, so what I'm gonna do is switch this to the overlay blend mode, and now I can see that perfectly circular overlap joint, and I'll line that up right in the center of my comp. Then I'll select them in the correct order, the start of the limb and then the end of the limb. I'm gonna rename this our leg. I'll make sure to use a hip and ankle label for the controllers. Click on the rubber rig button and there we have it. And these controllers were placed much closer than the arms and that's probably just because of the amount of overlap on the arm, but it still is a little bit off. So I'm again going to select this layer and just extend this out until it's about the right length and then I'm also gonna rotate this back a little bit. And I think the anchor point's all right. That's still a pretty good perfect circle at the knee. But down here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna adjust that segment length and then maybe rotate it back just a little bit right about there. Let's take off that overlay blend mode, just set it back to normal. Let's find our reference layer. I'll move that down below the leg so I can see it underneath. And I just need to go into that and make sure to solo the right thigh and the right calf. There we go. Now I can align these back to where it was. So I'll grab the hip and the ankle, drag this down and zoom in nice and close again so I can be very precise and get this back looking the way that it should. All right, nice and tight. And now all I need to do is adjust the length so that it snaps back to being straight up and down. That should work out perfectly. I can unsolo these, and just like that, I've rigged up an arm and a leg using the rubber rig system. And because we have these familiar rubber hose controllers, I can do things like parent the hand to that controller. So let's find the right hand, and I'm gonna parent that to the right arm wrist. Now when I move that wrist controller around, the hand is going to be attached to it. And I have other controls as well. If I don't want my limbs to shrink in scale as I bring that controller up closer to the other one, I could just increase the realism. If you put it all the way up to 100, it's going to be perfectly rigid, which might be a little bit more realistic, but also might feel a little bit stiff. So play around with the realism if you'd like. We also have controls to auto rotate the end or start which is what's allowing this hand to automatically rotate with the limb. If I uncheck that, then it's not gonna rotate it. I'll have to manually keyframe that rotation, but I like to have that on for my hands. Let's do the same thing with the shoe down at the base. I'm gonna parent that to the ankle, and now that ankle controller is going to animate that foot as well. Now, in this case, I probably would have auto rotate off just so that when I put the foot on the ground and you know have the character walking, it's not going to rotate as the leg is moving. That's how easy it is to use the rubber rig system. I'm going to quickly rig up the rest of this character and show you the final result. 
By the way, Rubberhost listed my right arm and left arm as R arm two and L arm two. That was because the artwork layer was also named R arm and L arm. So I just gave the artwork unique names and now I'm renaming those systems with the rename feature under the manage tab so that I don't have that extra two. Now that I have all of these limbs created, I have a lot of layers and I have a lot of parenting that I need to do. So I'm actually gonna click and drag my timeline and dock it to the left side of my After Effects workspace so that I can see a lot more layers at once. And I'm also gonna get rid of some of these switches so that I can see the parent and link column without having to have this be so expanded. Obviously, I'm gonna need to see my character over here and I can close this comp right here as well to get some more screen real estate. But now I have a little bit more room to see what I'm actually doing. What I wanna do is parent up the rest of this character. So I have the torso. This is really gonna be the driving controller for all of those limbs connection points. The shoulders and the hips are gonna be attached to the torso. The neck, the head, all of that will all stem to the torso. So I'm just gonna move that anchor point for the torso layer down to where it would bend, somewhere around the hips. Now I'm going to parent the shoulders as well as the hip controllers to that torso layer so that they follow it. So I'm just gonna parent that up. Now I can rotate the torso around and those limbs connection points are gonna follow it. Next, I'll just link everything up through simple parent chains and I'll have a working character rig. Now I have this parent chain relationship where the head will rotate and then the hair moves with it, but that obviously does not look very natural. So what I'd like to do is take this portion of the hair and have it not rotate as much when its parent, the head, rotates. To do that, I'm just gonna go into the rotation and add an expression. Now, can't actually see this, I need to move over so I can see that expression. And I wanna change this to be the same as the rotation for the head. So I'm gonna just pick whip the head. Actually, I don't wanna do that. I'll bring up the rotation and I'll pick whip the rotation. And instead of having it match the rotation, which would just amplify it, I wanna turn it into the negative rotation. So I'm gonna put a minus sign just before it. When I apply that expression, now, however I rotate the head, the hair is going to rotate in the opposite direction. That still doesn't look that natural though. What I'd like to have happen is it just rotates less than the head. To do that, I'm just gonna multiply all of this by 0.8 at the end, so that it's counteracting the rotation, but not at 100%, at 80%. With that done, now if I move the head around, you see that the hair is going to rotate, but very subtly. And I could adjust that, I could put in an expression controller if I really wanted to, but I'm just gonna drop that down to maybe five, so it's at 50% now, and it rotates more with the head. I liked 0.8, so I'm just gonna undo back to where that was, and now that I've rigged that up, I don't really need to see any of my other layers. Just the ones that need keyframes, which would be the torso, which is driving most of the motion, the head, the wrists, and the ankles. Any other secondary animation that happens, I can go back in and adjust the keyframes, but really I don't wanna be so cluttered here. So first of all, what I wanna do is take the wrists, the shoulders, the ankles, and the hips, and I'll move them to the top of my comp. I'll shut off the visibility of all the center controllers and I'll shy them as well. I'll take all of the artwork, select that label group, minus the torso and the head, and shy those layers as well as lock them. And I'll go ahead and lock the center controllers for good measure as well. Now I can shy all of my layers and I'll be left with just the layers that I'm concerned with. I don't need this reference layer anymore, so I'll delete it. I don't need to see my background layer in my timeline, so I'll shy it. And now I'm left with just the controls that I need to animate this character. And actually, I misspoke. I don't need to see the shoulders and I don't need to see the hips. I want them to be attached where they are, so I'm gonna go ahead and shy them, but I'll undo the shy switch first so that when I shy them, they don't go away. That way I can also shut off the visibility and lock them as well, and then reshy all of my layers. Now I'm looking at just a handful of layers instead of that huge timeline, and I can get to work animating this. In fact, I'm gonna move it back down to the lower part of my dock, and now I can get to work animating my character. Now if I grab the torso layer and move it around, you'll see that everything moves except for the hands and the feet. I'll probably go into these and undo that auto-rotate end for the ankles. And depending on what you're doing, you might even want to parent the hand controllers to the actual torso or whatever's driving the motion. So I'm just gonna do that now. That way, when the torso moves down, the arms move with them. But I can pose this character however I want now, so maybe I want to get a walk cycle going. I'll do something like this, drop her down, I could play around with the realism of the bends. Let's see, the right arms forward so the right leg should go backward. Maybe give her a slight rotate forward. 
hands probably high in the air, but as you can see, I can very easily start posing my character. I've very quickly rigged her up using the rubber rake system. It's a really great way to rig up a character using any type of artwork very simply, quickly and easily with very familiar controls to the actual rubber hose system. Like I said in the beginning, I'm including an After Effects project file in the description with a character that you can give Rubber Rig a try out yourself, so feel free to download that. Let me know how you like to use Rubber Hose. If you have any work, be sure to tag us both at Jake in Motion and Battleaxe.co. That way we can see your work and share it. We love to see your work using our tools. If you're interested in learning how to animate characters in After Effects, click on the card above to check out my Skillshare classes. I have several on character animation on both rigging and animating them, so go check those out if you wanna learn more. Thank you so much to all of my patrons for your continued support. If you're interested, please consider becoming a patron. Check the link in the description and I'll see you in the next video.